During their grand wedding proceedings, Laura and David spotted a poorly dressed, young stranger roaming around the festivity area. Having captured the attention of all attendees, the couple moved toward him. With resilience in his eyes, the boy requested an opportunity to speak. Hesitantly, they passed the microphone to him. They were oblivious to the profound influence his imminent thoughts would have on their remarkable day. His trembling voice narrated an unexpected story, which resonated in the silent room, leaving all present, including the bride, deeply moved. Keep watching to discover what happens next, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to never miss a story. Ensconced in the opulent restroom of a luxurious mansion-like hotel, Laura gently runs her hand over her stunning bridal attire. Perfectly designed for her body, it coordinated with the only keepsake she has from her history, a small color-tinted blue brooch. With precision, she attaches it above her heart. This small blue blossom creates a pleasing contrast against the white of her dress. She looks with nostalgia at the reflection of the well-recognized ancient brooch in the mirror. Overwhelmed with disbelief, she's about to wed her soulmate shortly. Before getting lost in the past, Kaylee, her chief bridesmaid, stumbles upon her in the room, emitting a gasp instantly. Voicing her adoration, Kaylee inquires about the brooch's origin. Responding with a popular wedding rhyme, Laura has to decide whether she wants to divulge her best friend of half a decade about her past activities. The old, slightly worn-out brooch makes Kaylee's eye twitch, almost going unnoticeable. Addressing her curiosity, Laura says this is her something old and something blue, and turns coy. She decides to keep the details reserved for another time. Kaylee, subduing her curiosity, compliments Laura on how the brooch enhances her dress's beauty. Laura holds back her wince, managing to keep her smile intact. She asks Kaylee if she's ready, smoothing her hair in the process. Laura admits her nervousness with a small shiver in her voice. Kaylee reassures her, remarking that everyone feels the same on their special day. She reminds her that the groom must be eager to see her in the dress. Overpowered by emotions, Laura fails to keep calm. The time to console herself is diminishing, with Kaylee leading her to the door. Before she realizes it, she cautiously descends the stairs one slow step at a time, aiming not to trip. Kaylee is always there to lend a helpful hand and assist in adjusting her gown once they reach the lobby. Kaylee briefly makes a face at the brooch but doesn't offer any further remarks. They were taking a moment to revisit memory lane. Standing in the garden that's a feast for the eyes, Laura awaits the signal to spin around so that David can finally witness her in her bridal costume. In the hush, she lovingly outlines the brooch with her finger. Regardless of Kaylee's expressed reservation about her decision, she's delighted that this single relic from her old days accompanies her on this meaningful occasion. Lost in thoughts of yesteryears, she almost misses Kaylee's directive to rotate. When she obliges, David's response is everything she has desired. His gaze takes in her face, her nuptial attire, and ultimately lands on the brooch. Is it? He starts and Laura affirms. Silently, he approaches her. You're the most gorgeous woman I've ever come across. The anticipation of calling you my wife is overwhelming. He gently plants a peck on her lips, their eyes both reflecting a tinge of silver. Guests start trickling in thereafter. Following the initial snaps, Laura and David are guided back to the grand dwelling. They parted ways with a soft peck, in synchrony with David's suggestive words, meet you at the aisle, followed by a playful wink before his exit. Left solitary in the corridor, Laura surveys her wedding congregation. Attendees are beginning to gather, and she observes Kaylee and David's chief usher, welcoming them briefly. As she's about to divert her attention, a peculiar sight arrests her gaze. There exists a tiny unknown lad just beyond the house's boundary, peering curiously into the estate. He appears unkempt and slightly grubby, visibly undernourished as well. Laura's heart contracts at the sight. She promptly instructs one of the mansion's staff members to extend a warm invitation to the boy. Are you acquainted with the lad, miss? The staff woman seeks clarification, her eyebrows arched in amazement. Laura stands firm on her sentiments. No! Laura responds, her focus fixed on the emaciated boy lurking in the shrubs. But he appears somewhat desolate and famished. Laura glances at the brooch and tenderly caresses one of its gloomy gemstones. I'd like you to invite him indoors and offer him some food, she advises the staffer. Certainly, miss, 
the staff woman consents, departing from Laura's presence to interact with the boy. Content with her act of kindness, Laura pivots back towards the restroom for a last minute freshening up. Ultimately prepped, Laura steals one last look at her reflection, her heart pulsating with an effervescent mix of anticipation and happiness. Taking a long, calming breath, she emerges from the washroom, her gown rustling subtly as it brushes against the polished stone floor. The corridor, suffused with a comforting illuminance, feels like an intimate crossing from the history that is hers alone to the shared chronicles she is about to participate in. She assumes her position, anticipating the signal, the delicate brooch on her chest reflecting the soft lighting. At the initiation of her embarkment, the portal spreads wide, displaying the procession paths unfurled ahead of her, a route bordered by cherished and familiar faces. As she embarks on this journey, accompaniment rises, offering harmonious guidance towards her destiny. From the distant termination, David stands by keenly, a representation of her discovered blissfulness. Among the attending members, she notes the adolescent, his attendance a cryptic benediction. Beaming, she proceeds, every stride symbolizing a rhythm in their conjoint ballad. Their union commences. Having arrived at David, Laura extends her hand towards him, their digits enwrapping akin to their perspectives intertwining. The conductor's discourse fades into the backdrop as exchange glances communicate silent but profoundly felt promises. For the two of them, the rest of the world fades into oblivion, leaving just the actuality they're poised to accept. This instant, a gateway to an everlasting companionship, is distinguished by the warmth of their linked palms, an unvoiced pledge of togetherness and affection, and commitments traded. Declarations of affection and dedication fill the atmosphere their vows taking the form of a woven canvas of dreams and hopes. Laura's voice maintains stability, and David stirs with sentiment. They offer their existence, hearts, and futures to the other. The expressions fortifying a connection as primal as the universe itself, bands indicative of their unending loop of mutual love, are exchanged, flickering in the faint illumination, silent observers of their solemn commitments. United at last as this proclamation resounds, Husband and wife, applause erupts, a wave of joy and festive celebration. As a pair, Laura and David take their first step forward, marking not an end, but a commencement to their journey. A vibrant chorus of cheer and delight follows them, a harmonious symphony echoing their well wishes and happiness. Outdoors, the sun makes its descent, but the day is far from concluded, though in a manner Laura and David could never have conceived, shared tranquil instances. Inside the quietude of the washroom, Laura and David share gentle caresses and soft hugs, a short-lived sanctuary of serenity amidst the day's commotion. They assist each other out of the ceremonial attire, light-hearted and affectionate, transitioning into their dinner garments. The exuberance and hushed discussions between them suffuse the space, bearing testament to their felicity and their intimate connection, the commencement to jubilation. Hand in hand, Laura and David make their grand entry into the dining hall, welcomed by the enthusiastic applause of their guests. The room glistens under the captivating chandeliers, tables dressed in sophisticated designs, and the countenances of kin and companions filled with joy. They establish their places at the main table, their expressions beaming, prepared to share this banquet of devotion and appreciation with everyone dear to them. Proclamation of Speeches as guests get comfortable, ushers come forth, revealing the timeline for the evening. The meal is to be supplemented by addresses from the newlywed pair. Afterward, the floor will be open for others to express themselves during the gathering. The room vibrates with expectancy, guests leaning forward, anxious for the eloquent expressions of affection, delight, and existence that are about to sweep the space, marking the jubilee with communal narratives and blessings. Appreciation expressed. Side by side, Laura and David kickstart their address, their tones saturated with delight. They express gratitude towards everyone for partaking in their distinctive day and for the affection and encouragement guiding them to this juncture. Their genuine appreciation resonates, affecting the spirits of all present. A warm recognition of the journey they have embarked on, accompanied not by themselves, but encircled by those who treasure them. Delight and affection. Laura initiates with the narrative of their acquaintance, peculiar and unanticipated, with David interpolating to enhance the shades of the tale. 
Their playful repartee, flecked with affectionate reminiscences and tender-hearted teases, incites laughter across the banquet hall. The delightful sound permeates the space, a spirited composition of communal amusement and fondness, the perfect commencement of an unforgettable event. They had no foreknowledge of the twist that destiny had in stock for them. Surprising guest inquiry. As they take their places for the meal, David inclines towards Laura, curiosity reflected in his eyes. Did you extend an invite to a stranger? He queries, referring to the lad he spotted among the congregation. Laura halts, fork halfway to her lips, taken aback by the surprise inquiry. It takes a moment, and then she recalls the forlorn, solitary figure at the periphery of their celebration and begins to explain. Laura's confusion dissipates as she recalls the boy she stumbled upon outside. She informs David about the scruffy, famished boy secreted in the bushes and how her heart wouldn't tolerate leaving him shunned. She had instructed one of the ushers to welcome him in and provide him something to consume, acting on a compassionate impulse. She starts to blabber, trying to explain why she would invite someone unknown to them on their special day. David's empathy. David listens attentively, his stare softening with every word Laura pronounces. After she's done, he lifts her hand tenderly towards his mouth, landing a cherishable peck. The reason why you're my wife, he proclaims, his gaze lighting up with awe and affection. His statement serves as a soothing affirmation of their profound bond and mutual principles intertwined at the core of their matrimony. Collective resolution. Together, they reach a consensus that the lad should be allowed to stay and treated just like all the other attendees, making sure he's well-fed and feeling at ease. As the initial meal is presented, David and Laura kick off their banquet. The lavish courses, a succession of gastronomical wonders, adorn their table, but including the lad in their celebration adds an additional warmth to the gathering. He would definitely not go unfed this evening. Kaylee's detection. Halfway into the meal, Kaylee bends a bit towards Laura, a shade of worry in her tone. I saw a lad of unkempt appearance loitering about, she murmured, oblivious to the fact that he was the same lad Laura had welcomed in. Laura affirms, empathizing with Kaylee's defensive instincts, her heart brimming with contentment, aware that they're expanding their circle of happiness to invite someone in dire need of it. Clarification for Kaylee. Laura softly briefs Kaylee about the boy, explaining how she had spotted him alone and famished outside and chose to invite him in for a meal. She aspired it to be a modest gesture of goodwill on their special occasion. Laura's tone is tender, striving to convey the sentiment inherent in her decisions. She hopes Kaylee will comprehend the drive to reach out to someone less privileged. Argument sprouts. Kaylee's expression turns into a frown, unimpressed. She harbors doubts about the propriety of accepting an unexpected, scruffy boy at the wedding. The quiet exchange grows into strain, causing a minor rupture in the ceremonial environment. The argument intensifies until David, noticing the change, inclines with concern. What's the matter? He asks, his voice acting like a conduit back to the tranquility of the preceding moments, interrupting the impending tiff between the two friends, letting it dwindle. Let's not prolong it, Kaylee. Laura advises, mingling her exhaustion and assertiveness, feeling the strain of the day. She doesn't wish for such discord to tarnish the delightful evening. Redirecting her attention to David, she displays a forced smile, attempting to overlook the incident. The remainder of the banquet ensues harmoniously, the previous tension melting into the night's delight and merrymaking. Disturbance interferes. Just on the verge of dessert being served, a sudden disturbance from the far corner of the hall seizes everyone's attention. Attendees swivel in their benches, a whisper of intrigue percolating through the chamber. Laura notices a staff member attempting to escort a young man outside, his defiance creating a spectacle. This unforeseen disturbance temporarily interferes with the merry ambiance, and Laura is left perplexed as to what action to take as Kaylee's advice continues to echo in her mind. A feeling of determination settles in Laura's heart. She starts to feel unsettled at the sight, her natural protectiveness comes into play, preparing her to rise and interfere for the sake of the young man who has intruded on her marriage ceremony and, quite surprisingly, into her circle of concern. The focus in the room is bifurcated, some guests whispering amongst themselves, while others look on as Laura gears up to step in, resolved to ensure the young man is treated with deserved kindness and courtesy. 
The staff member, who initially was hospitable towards the young man, steps in. Her composed nature alleviates the escalating pressure. Laura stays in her place but observes the situation being resolved unobtrusively. Laura gently finds reassurance the staff member handles the situation. Her eyes do not leave the young man until she is certain he is genuinely all right. Subsequently, the room seamlessly reverts to its former engaged murmur of dialogues and giggles, the incident blending into the tapestry of memories from the evening. Sensing Laura's tension, David tenderly places his hand on her knee, offering a reassuring squeeze. He whispers that everything is fine and assures to talk with the young man later to ensure his well-being. David's comforting presence enables Laura to shift her attention back to the festivities. It serves as a reminder of the commitment they have just made to each other, poised to face together any unforeseen issue that the evening may present. Laura breathed a sigh of relief as she watched the boy being served dessert, alongside all the other guests. Observing him picking up his spoon and starting to eat, a slight grin adorning his face instilled Laura with a profound feeling of relief. The sight subtly echoes the sense of benevolence and largesse that the day stands for, which she could never anticipate being reciprocated. Following the placid resolution of the earlier disturbance, Laura and David shift their focus back to their friends. They indulge in a friendly banter with Kaylee and David's closest buddy, Jake. They exchange amusing anecdotes, the effortless chatter bestowing a sense of familiarity and delight back at their table. The dessert serving appears as a pleasant pause, reinforcing the ties of friendship and love that the day stands for. As dinner wraps up, Laura and David hand in hand express their goodbyes to their guests. They articulate their appreciation for being part of their special day and invite each guest to join them for some more joyous events. Their exchange radiates gratitude and expectation, hinting at more shared delight. Laura and David conclude their gala, needing to prepare for their next adventure in the suite. Leaving the banquet area, their fingers entwined as they guide each other to their private housing. Their atmosphere is charged with hopeful prospects. Within their secluded haven, they assist each other with tenderness indicative of a profound connection, transitioning from their ceremonial attire to warmer, more festive clothing, fitting for their wedding reception. Attire and conversation, David assists Laura into her dress for their traditional initial marital waltz. He brings up the subject of the unacquainted young man, his expressions teeming with genuine worry and intrigue. Should we invite him into our conversation, David ponders, peering into Laura's eyes. Their likely interaction with the unexpected visitor lingers in the air, a testament to their common empathy and obligation. Agreement and empathy. Enclosed in David's arms, Laura concedes, her admiration for her husband accentuated, who stands with her in reaching out with assistance. That's a brilliant plan, she consents, her voice quiet yet resolute. Together, they conclude their modifications, spiriting them as they descend to the grand event locale, prepared to extend their sympathy to the unexpected guest. Arrival at a plum. Entering the venue, Laura and David encounter the spirited camaraderie of their companions and kin, loudly acknowledging their nuptials. The atmosphere is electrifying. The thrill, joy, and welcome for the newlyweds are perceptible. Their arrival is a celebration of love and bliss that connects with everyone present. Waltz of oneness. As the commendations die down, the band stirs again, inviting Laura and David for their first matrimonial waltz. Enclosed in the soft gleam of the event lights, they move in sync, their bodies harmonizing with the rhythm. This dance proclaims unity in the vows they have made, capturing the grace and sentiment unfolding in their arms. After their captivating first dance, their movements draw in other couples to the floor, creating a mosaic of swaying figures. The hall transforms into a sea of reveling couples, each move reflecting the joy of the occasion. Melodies continue to fill the air, and the dance space pulsates with the liveliness of loved ones sharing in the joy of the newly married couple's significant day, a time for rejuvenation. Laura and David eventually slide off from the place of movement, their fingers interlinked, joy interchanged amid breaths. They aim for a far-off corner, a welcomed reprieve in sight to satiate their dryness. The corner, shining under gentle illumination, proffers a brief sanctuary, a location for the two of them to relish a silent instance together amid the ongoing merrymaking. Warming, celebratory salutations. As they steer through the gathering, the atmosphere brims with warm commendations and loving praise for the wedding splendor. 
From the bewitching venue to the precise adornments, each grasp, embrace, and grin they get verifies the affection and esteem their audience has for them, magnifying the brightness of their already unforgettable event. Questions around the youth. Among the gush of pleasant wishes, a number of guests ask tentatively about the unkempt lad seen at the marriage event, their voices mixing worry with fascination. Laura and David share a look, acknowledging the need to satisfy their audience's curiosity while preserving the youngster's pride and deserved courtesy at their celebration. Laura's eyes sweep over the vibrant throng, at last landing on the lone silhouette of the lad standing in isolation, his gaze scrutinizing the merriment from an angle. With a shared intention, she and David veer towards him. Their advance is intentional, aware of the relevance this moment carries, not just for them, but for the young boy awaiting their complete focus. Laura lightly squats to lock eyes with the boy, her look warm and inviting. Up close, she discerns that he's somewhat older than her initial assessment, his peepers carrying untold narratives. Hello there, she greets, her tone hushed yet filled with sincerity. The boy hesitates, but then a timid beam lights up his face in response to the compassion extended towards him. Worry and solace. Did you think the supper was good? Laura queries with evident concern in her voice. The boy nods, his gaze quickly flitting from Laura to David and back finally settling on the sky-blue pin affixed above her cardiac region. His intrigue in the pin, a spark of familiarization or inquisitiveness in his expression, forges an unspoken link between them, a tacit communication only they can grasp, a daring plea. Before David can verbalize his queries, the boy's manner alters and sudden bravery springs up. Could I perhaps make some remarks when it's time for speeches? He inquires, his voice now more confident, yet filled with a meek sincerity. A moment of confusion crosses Laura and David's faces, the unexpected query catching them by surprise amid the jubilant proceedings. Following a swift confabulation and understanding of the young man's genuine wish, they nodded in unison. They validate him with comforting, affirmative expressions, acknowledging the significance of providing him the chance to have his presence and message heard. Laura speaks softly, reassuring him. You'll have your chance to articulate your thoughts right after Kaylee and David's parents have their turn. Their conclusion mirrors an intriguing curiosity coupled with an inherent belief in the young man's plea. They detail the list of orders for the young man, verifying that he grasps his position in the lineup. You will be third in the speaking order, David reinforces, his voice full of affirmation. The young man's eyes verified that, with a blend of gratitude and anxiety, he had an unspoken commitment to respect the opportunity they'd given him. Laura and David, conversely, can't fathom what words he might want to share. Bidding him adieu with a nod, Laura sends him an additional smile, a silent hope for his well-being. But her grin wanes into a worried expression as she notices his eyes fixated on her brooch. The depth of his gaze triggers a brief discomfort, an enigma remaining unanswered. Nevertheless, the ebullient atmosphere of the celebration quickly dissolves these transient seconds of uncertainty, leaving behind only the warmth and unity of shared enjoyment. Shrugging off the lingering queries, Laura accepts David's extended hand, their fingers interlocking as they progress back to the epicenter of the joyful occasion. Together, they climb the slightly elevated dais, comfortably placing themselves on the love seat reserved for them. This shared seat of honor provides them with a panoramic view of their loved ones, gathered for this joyful manifestation. The ambient murmur quiets as a facilitator steps forth, indicating the beginning of speeches. A reverent silence blankets the room as David's mother grasps the mic, her charisma commanding every participant's attention. With a light, graceful cough, she readies herself to deliver her thoughts, a testament to the couple standing on the threshold of their mutual future. David's parents approach the platform elegantly, their words entwining to form a narrative of reminiscences, aspirations, and satisfaction for their son and his wife, Laura. Their poignant speech brings to life the journey that culminated in this moment in the promising road awaiting. It's a tribute to familial affections, deep seeds, and the precious gifts they bestow upon a couple's union. An emotional token of gratitude. As the oration comes to an end, feelings surge and mists of joy slip from David and Laura's eyes. Standing up, their arms extend in gratitude, and they hug David's parents warmly. The depth of this embrace speaks more than words, a silent thank you for a lifetime of nurturing and care. 
As they draw back, blotting the gleam of their joyful tears, Kaylee marches up to the podium, a microphone her tool, ready to contribute her voice to the chorus of joy, laughter, and fondness. Strewn with amusing personal stories, Kaylee's speech has Laura and David erupting in laughter, their joy contagious and rippling through the assembly. However, as she wraps up, her tone evolves into one of deep, sincere affection and contemplation on her profound bond with Laura. Her words sketch a bright picture of their shared sojourn filled with mutual aid, smiles, and shared moments, which deeply touch the hearts of the listeners. Following a round of applause, Kaylee cinches Laura in a tight hug, whispering a vow of severe outcomes to David if he would ever bring Laura to tears. Her warning, offered with a teasing grin, generates a gale of laughter from the attendees, a casual yet underscored moment, revealing the depth of her care for Laura and the fellowship among them. Laura, with a smile, is the next to take the microphone, her voice resounding across the room. She announces that one more individual would like to share some thoughts tonight, her gaze sweeping across the crowd before resting on the little boy. The crowd turns, interest sparked, as Laura beckons him to join her on the podium, handing him the microphone with gentle persuasion. A courageous commencement. The boy steps up to the platform, stalling for a split second before facing the assembly. Laura steps aside, providing him with space, a supportive look of anticipation on her face. As he grips the microphone, the initial quiet stretches, an intense stillness pervading the air. Then, gathering his nerves, he launches his narrative, beginning with the unexpected benevolence that Laura had shown him earlier in the day. His voice, while clear, is also gentle as he narrates how he ended up at the event's entrance alone, an outsider, only to be graciously accepted by the bride's kindness. The room descends into silence, everyone's attention riveted to his words as he describes a simple benevolent act that led to his being there, though his presence was far from a mere happening of chance. The lad begins to delve deeper into his narrative, highlighting how the lady, oblivious of his identity, had offered him kindness, welcoming him to the warmth and acknowledging his need for shelter and sustenance. His recounting eloquently illuminates an instance where benevolence bridged the distance between complete strangers. But then he unveils a fact, a common history that no one saw coming. As he proceeds, the lad confesses, however, I am acquainted with her, triggering a universal gasp of astonishment. The ambience grows dense with expectancy, everyone inching in closer, engrossed in the unforeseen twist in his account. The hall is packed with attendees from various backgrounds, now finding themselves united in a singular moment of suspense, waiting for the mystifying cloud to clear, as even Laura is bewildered by this declaration, unraveling connections. With the audience so engrossed in his narration, the lad further elaborates on how he encountered the lady years ago, in an environment far away from the current glamour of the wedding venue. We were both vagabonds, he discloses, his tone steady yet filled with sentiment. The disclosure establishes a connection to a period of Laura's life she rarely opened up about, unveiling a side of her life unknown to many present. Finding connections Laura had provided for the lad when she too had been without a home, the lad now recognized as one of the homeless children Laura had cared for during her own struggles, is a living symbol of her empathy and tenacity. As the story unfolds, the account of survival and benevolence weaved into Laura's own journey from the streets to the altar, uncovering a depth of personality and strength that resonates deeply with the audience. Recognition and reunion. As the lad winds up, Laura, overwhelmed by emotions, stands up. Matthew, she murmurs, recognition dawning as her voice pierces the silence. Tears cascade down her cheeks as Matthew nods, a smile surfacing amidst his own emotional chaos. The hall thunders with mixed cheers and watery eyes, witnessing the heart-touching reunion between two individuals united by shared struggles and remembered kindness. Matthew's tone strengthens as he reflects on the times Laura stood by him, sharing her scarce food to make sure he didn't starve. His gratitude reverberates in the room, striking a chord in the hearts of the listeners. He emphasizes how Laura's kind acts acted as beams of light in his darker days, a guiding star that led him through tough times and was kept alive in his memory. The blue brooch was Matthew's gift to her. He proceeds to recount a past incident, a remnant from a time when they were on the brink of going separate ways. Matthew had stumbled upon a delicate azure brooch on the sidewalks which he had bequeathed to Laura 
as a souvenir of appreciation and nostalgia. The crowd is held rapt as they grasp the value of Laura's present accessory, the same brooch. Its symbolism had come around full circle now. Matthew was the one who presented her this Azure accessory. Delving deeper into the memoir, he brings up a point from the past, an era when they were on the verge of taking different paths. Matthew clarifies that his wish to give a speech at the marriage ceremony was triggered by an intention to publicly express gratitude towards Laura for her undeterred backing during his most precarious periods. His speech, simple yet meaningful, resonates deeply with each guest, underscoring the impact of sympathy and how an individual can influence another. A hush blankets the room in respect for the bond that Matthew and Laura shared, a gripping alliance of habits and time. As Matthew concludes his recollections, Laura approaches him, her face wet with tears, and embraces him in her open arms. Their hug, a poignant emblem of reconnection and recovery, elicited a collective gasp from the crowd. In this instance of shared vulnerability, Laura and David silently promised to expand their new family, deciding to aid Matthew in stepping away from his former life and accepting him into their household and hearts. As they unveil their decision to integrate Matthew into their life, the crowd responds with applause and acclaim, a display of the community's support and affection for the couple in their generous hearts. This moment, filled to the brim with emotion and significance, marks the commencement of a new phase in their life, a period overshadowed by love, empathy, and unity. Their united presence, a family newly formed, gives a glimpse of a future filled with potential and hope. Their togetherness is indicative of the promise of a prosperous and joyful tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this inspiring story, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more heartfelt stories. Until next time, keep spreading kindness and love in your own lives.